All right. Well, it's that time of year uh, when we start to think about spring bulbs. So uh, fall is the time to plant them, and now is a perfect time. Uh, it was proposed that we do this presentation in October, and it's really um, it's kind of too late in in October to find what you're you're going to want to. Uh, the availability of uh, material goes down very quickly. And just looking, perusing internet websites um, recently, you can see the out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. So uh, when we're done today, you know, spend some time with your catalogs or online or in the garden centers, and uh, maybe this weekend you can get some bulbs into the ground. Welcome, everyone, and uh, uh, Hope you uh, find something, uh, some ideas here today. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please share them and we'll speak up at the end. Okay, so um, the big two, uh, daffodils and tulips. We're gonna talk quite a bit about these two plants, but at the end of this hour, uh, if you do nothing else, I want you to buy some of these uh, King Alfred daffodils and some Darwin hybrid uh, tulips. They're, uh, you won't be disappointed. The colors are just spectacular and they'll get your spring uh, going in, in good style. So uh, here's kind of what we're going for. Uh, and in this picture, you have several different varieties of tulip. Uh, when I first uh, uh, got this picture, I thought that we had in the foreground um, uh, a um, a jonquil or jonquil or a tete-a-tete uh, uh, -tete, a daffodil, but it is a it's a pansy, but it would look just as nice, maybe nicer with a with a little narcissus, a little daffodil in there. But you have a double, a double um, tulip here. You have some uh, Darwin hybrids in the back. You have a uh, veritifolia, um, uh, the green kind of tulip. You have a peony flowered tulip in the yellow in the back. And so uh, in this display, there's a lot of what we, we would look for in our spring store. Now, tulip mania, um, you've probably heard the stories about the uh, 17th century uh, Holland when um, speculators uh, forced the price up of a single tulip bulb uh, to an astronomical level of uh, 10 times the average person's salary or more than the more than the value of a, of a home uh, this is a painting of the viceroy tulip which uh, still exists but uh, not exactly like this but uh, you can see the extreme um, that the tulip mania went and um, uh, this is probably one of the first examples of um, being very speculative and that kind of uh, investment bubble that we see kind of regularly now. So those three things. So today we're going to talk mostly about true bulbs and the true bulb is a um, if you cut it in half the cross section the entire plant is there from the roots to the stem to the flower to all the reproductive uh, organs exist in the middle of the of the um, the bulb and um, it's often layered like an onion so that uh, and it we usually have a sheath around the outside now we will talk about other kinds of structures there are many kind of storage structures that have evolved uh, you have the corm like a crocus there's a corm a gladiola you have the tuberous roots um, and you have tubers you have the rhizome like an iris and um, bulbils or bulblets uh, would be often on the top of a of a plant like uh, an alium or a garlic or something like that you might have seen. These are reproductive structures. Most most plants probably propagate by seed, but uh, today we're talking bulbs. Size size matters, um, and uh, the bigger the bulb generally the healthier the plant's going to be. So a 10 centimeter uh, tulip bulb is a good field grown bulb and you'll do very well with it. Um, a 12 centimeter bulb might be a little uh, more robust. So you look for, now when we're referring to the size, 
it's it is the circumference of the bulb in in metric or in centimeters generally sometimes in inches but often most of the time it's in um, in a metric measure uh, narcissus and daffodils um, vary widely from uh, different varieties so you can't always uh, tell by the size whether you're getting the best quality but uh, just by the size but uh, as a general rule a 14 centimeter um, King Alfred bulb uh, would be a smaller flower and plant than a 17 centimeter um, King Alfred bulb. So, and you can see uh, in this picture there, there are many many sizes and many many shapes and there's forms and there's uh, various kind of structures. So how deep to plant them? The general rule of thumb is about three times the, the size of the bulb. So if you have a uh, a two inch tall tulip bulb, you would want the bottom of the hole to be about six inches deep. Now they're not that critical, so you can probably be off by 50s to 100% and still do just fine in many cases. But uh, each, each uh, when you buy a, a bulb on the package or in the guide, it will suggest the planting depth and the spacing. And it's, uh, it's easy, it's certainly easy enough to adjust that. Tools. There are many, many kinds of tools um, available. And what you're comfortable with, what works for you, is up to you. I have tried m almost all, many of these designs, and I choose a shovel. I dig a hole. Uh, appropriate size might be a foot, two feet in diameter. If I'm doing a bed, I'll dig out the entire bed, put a tarp down, dig out the entire bed to depth, and then uh, plant. That way I can see my spacing. I can interplant. I can put down all the red ones and then uh, at a foot apart and then put down uh, interplant with all the yellow ones or whatever. And I can control. Um, and then if I'm doing layers, I can then put two inches or three inches of soil over the the base layer of bulbs and then put in another variety and you kind of create a lasagna kind of effect but if you're comfortable with the tool that's great um many of them like say an auger for example that depends on uh, how loose the soil is how effective it's going to be a very hard soil is very difficult to work with an auger a very loose soil can be difficult to work with an oil auger because it soil's going back in as fast as you're drawing it out. Uh, the other thing I find uh, sometimes difficult with many of these is that uh, you want to, you got to put the point up, <laughs> the, the top edge of the bulb needs to be on top. And when you drop it into a hole, you don't always have control of that, as well as you don't have, uh, you may not get firm contact with the soil underneath it. And that's very important. So uh, what you would like to do with various tools is up to you. Your experience may be different from mine. Okay, we have various kinds of tulips and how you're going to use them in the landscape will depend on the features of each uh, type, type of tulip. And we'll go through some of these and they will point out some of the different features and, um, and take that into account when you Try to determine how you might, might want to use these in your landscape. Darwin hybrids. This is the mainstay of the tool of these glorious bold colors in the landscape. They have this typical tulip uh, shape with this uh, kind of wider base and come in at the top a little bit. It's the classic tulip form. The Darwin hy hybrids were developed in the 50s, uh, kind of a uh, bringing together the uh, emperor tulip and the early tulip. So you have a tulip that's you know, late April, early May around our area, and it's very strong. It holds up well in the weather. They're generally in the 20 to 24 inches tall range. Uh, there are many, many varieties available. Uh, it, all the home centers and garden centers and catalogs and internet sites have wide selection on these. 
and uh, it's a great choice and uh, as I said before at the end I would recommend you get some of these if nothing else uh, so the Gree EI tulips uh, all of these in this section are tulipa uh, is, the, is the genus and then the species or, or the varieties or the next the next name so the Gree eyes are this is a hybrid but it's from a species they're developed from a species tulip um, and by that I mean a wild a wild tulip so this is a hybrid taken from a wild tulip and it's a short one uh, eight eight inches tall and it, um, it can it doesn't really perennialize but you can get a few years out of them and they do last a while in the landscape where the the Darwin hybrids are ca called perennial uh, tulips but they they will peter out over time you'll get less the second year less the third year uh, I, in, out of a bed of a hundred Darwin hybrids you're probably going to get 50% year two maybe 25% year three um, maybe better if your soil's better and uh, we'll talk about soil as we go on uh Kaufmannianas are an, another one that has been hybridized from the species uh tulip and it's again a short one it often has this colored mottled foliage it, this is a great one for naturalizing i planted a couple of dozen 20 years ago and they still come up uh, so uh, maybe not as many as I put in but they're still out there every year they greet you it's kind of like serendipity uh, when you can put something in the ground and have it come back reliably that's a good one make a note now on each of these slides there's a number on the bottom so if you have any questions uh, um, you don't get the name written down in time uh, maybe you can answer your question doubles a double this as with any flower uh, more petals there's also a peony variety which are even more petals uh, these are wonderful to bed with and they they're bold they're a little shorter generally they're a little later generally um, but you can do some make fantastic displays these are uh, flowers that look very close up or from from the road uh, from your neighbors so you can enjoy those uh, Fostorianas are kind of this reflex form there's a, they are also called the lily lily flowering tulips and they have this uh, wider at the top shape pointed petals and they, they have a very nice effect especially a little closer now as we go through you'll see different forms and, and shapes and some of these are, are more appreciated from a closer vantage point next to a sidewalk, uh, next to a garden path, that kind of thing. Iridophora, this is a, sometimes referred to as the green tulip. You see on the petal that's green color, and it is available in many, many colors, but they all seem to have this green streak on the petal. It's a in, very interesting effect. Fringe is just that kind of has this frost frost effect um, might be lost in a, a mass display from far away it might be something you want to have in a, as you view it a little closer up carrot tool interesting petal shape this curve and this uh, margin it's uh, fringed um, but not to the fine degree that the fringe tulip is it's and species tulip um, species tulips are shorter sometimes they're uh, uh, they can be very wide they, they might be five inches across the uh, generally in the six to ten inch height range uh, they are much better at perennializing or naturalizing there again they'll, they'll peter out over time but you may get several years out of them uh, these are used in the Stinson planting uh, or lawn planting often, and we'll talk about that a little later. 
Okay, so here's just a, someone's backyard display. You've got uh, your uh, Darwin hybrids in various colors and uh, underplanted by uh, purple, violets, or pan uh, pansies. Um, nice, nice bold color and it, it, the harbingers of spring. You know that it, it's it's uh, what we're looking for. So, uh, daffodils. Now there's many varieties of daffodils, in many colors. Daffodils are hardworking. They're, they'll flower before tulips. Uh, they're usually in, in April in, in our area. And then their backbone, they're, they naturalize easily and they can uh, work very, very well for you in your landscape. Uh, this is uh, the white, the white daffodil is the Mount Hood, the classic, and the orange rimmed uh, Poeticus. Uh, that's a very durable plant. There were there was a clump of uh, poeticus in my backyard when I moved in 30 years ago. I did not put there, and uh, still one or two come up every year. So uh, it's a, that's a great plant. Uh, it's kind of an old fashioned. I, I would guess it probably dates to the 16th century. Uh, this is a jonquil. Uh, it's a little more rounded on the leaf, a little shorter. And you can get from two to five or six flowers out of a out of one bulb. It's a, um, a little finer than uh, more refined, maybe than uh, some of the big bulb trumpet uh, trumpet uh, daffodils. Now I use the word daffodil and narcissus interchangeably. They are all narcissus, and daffodil is a common name that is kind of, kind of used, maybe overused. Okay, so we have different different shapes. I'm not going to go through all these shapes, but the jonquil, uh, the uh, head of tets. This is a that's a diminutive one with several small trumpet-shaped flowers. Uh, it's probably six to eight eight inches high, maybe ten, but it's small and it's a wonderful little little plant, uh, especially if you can put it together with uh, some of the other variety the the blues, the true blues that we're going to talk about in some of the other uh, vaults as we go through here. Uh, the trumpet is the classic, the uh, long cup, that's your, your King Alfred and your uh, Dutch masters and those kind of things. Large cup, small cup, uh, trien, uh, triandrus is a, a reflex where you get three or four, three obviously, uh, hanging uh, flowers from the kind of uh, hang from the, the top of the stem and uh, and then the others are just simply uh, forms of, of the, uh, the geometry of the, of the flower um, design big and bold subtle intimate see, seeing and fragrance so figure out what you would like to do if you want to go big and bold you want a display that's seen by the neighbors and from the street then um, take some of these bigger blossoms and the bolder colors, and you can you can make them contrast. Um, you, red and yellow, pink and purple, uh, and you can be bold, and they are astounding. And we'll take a look at some pictures that, that to do just that. Uh, subtle. You can take the pastel colors and and blend them. Uh, when you're putting together your design, look uh, there. You look for sequence of bloom. You want if you want two colors to be out at the same time. Make sure you have the same variety, the similar variety. Um, if you want them to have a longer, say from late April till June, uh, then you're going to stagger your uh, your bloom times. You're going to have some early, some mid seasons, some later varieties. If you want to create an intimate uh, planting, some of my favorite favorite bulbs are just a few bulbs in a small space where I where I walk or where I sit and have a cup of coffee, um, or maybe when I'm going to get the paper in the morning, uh, say like a, a Silosiberica with uh, a tete-a-tete daffodil. It's just a gorgeous thing. A little 
sharp, a deep blue with, a, with that vivid yellow. It's, uh, it's tremendous. It, it, you wouldn't see it from more than 20 feet away, so you, you see it when you walk by. Now, seeing. Design is, is kind of a combination between being an artist and being a philosopher, quite frankly. It's, uh, it is our perception, what we do with it. See it. Um, it's one thing to just observe color from from far away but it's another to see what's going on uh, uh, and appreciate uh, appreciate each each uh, plant for what it's bringing to, to your experience and uh, you can get a lot more out of it when you look at these bulbs and you try to enjoy yourself in that way now fragrance um, many of these bulbs are not fragrant and some of them are and so I um, Obviously, a hyacinth, for example, would have a strong fragrance. Um, most of the others are grown for their, their color and their form. Um, some of them, um, well, we'll talk about it, some of them are kind of stinky. So you can uh, like need to be aware of that. So now here we are, bold. Uh, there are very few places that do uh, tulips as well as Albany. Um, uh, Albany does a great job, but it's a lot of tulips each year. and. Uh, you want to get a sense of, of what can be done, this is a wonderful place to do it. Um, now this is a, this would be a very simple thing to do. Uh, it would take you just a couple of hours of digging, preparation, planning, and it's only one kind of tulip here. It's a, a Darwin hybrid, probably apple dorn, something like that. Um, and I would guess you're looking at about 100, maybe 150. Uh, tulip bulbs here uh, that you plant them, dig a hole, plant them about uh, six to eight inches down, cover them up, and in the early May, this is what you'll have in your yard. It's not that difficult. Uh, now we'll go on to some of the uh, the others. Uh, we'll leave our tulips and daffodils for a minute, and we'll talk about some. Crocus is a is a wonderful workhorse, one of the earliest in the spring and the uh, it uh, gives us a little jolt of joy and uh, warmth to see these colors in our lawns and gardens. Uh, this is a great one to, um, to just kind of take a, a shovel or a spade or a trowel and just kind of make a small hole and put one in and make it do that repeat. Uh, dig, plant, repeat. And uh, in the spring, you, you know, have a nice display and a nice surprise. And then, will generally unless we have some interference from some rodents or something uh that can persist for a long time so. a muscari muscari is a is a great little workhorse uh it's called a great hyacinth um because it has this kind of clustery look like a grape and um it's easy to work with it's pretty inexpensive you can do some very nice things as an under under plant. Uh, I've planted thousands of them. I enjoy the plant. It comes, it comes back year after year reliably. It does not like to be wet. You plant them about three to five inches down, about three inches apart, and um, they come up year after year. You have to let the foliage die back or brown off before you remove it. Uh, so you want to consider that. And it's, Comes in white, pink, uh, several varieties of blue, and this light blue is a uh, Valerie uh, Fini, is a, is a nice one, or Baby baby Breath is another variety that's very similar to that. So let's see what we can do with some muscari. Okay, so here's the muscari is under planted uh, for daffodils. It's a wonderful effect. And here goes with some tulips. Very effective, very dramatic, very easy to do. This one's not quite as easy to do. Uh, I would guess there's 40,000 muscari in this, in this plant. Now, I have seen this LA uh, planted in three other, if you look, I've lied for, for photographs uh, in very different setups. So uh, this is some, someone with a, a bit of money and time on their hands, um, but it is gorgeous. I mean, Alium. Alium is uh, Latin for garlic. Uh, there's some wonderful, um, 
onion plants. The, uh, some of the giant headed ones are uh, Globe Master and uh, I don't know what they, what they do right now, but uh, Molly is the yellow one. Um, they're, they're stunning. Uh, Schuberti is a huge one. It doesn't have much color, but it has kind of like a sparkler spread, uh, I'm going to say, you know, 12 inches across. So these are dramatic. They can be anywhere from a few inches tall, 10 inches tall, to three, three and a half feet tall. Uh, and they are generally uh, ear and, and rodent resistant, which is nice. Fritillaria, there are many kinds of Fritillaria, Fritillaria crown imperial or imperialis. Uh, it comes in orange, yellow, the lutea is yellow, and there's a rubra maximum uh, that's red. Um, it's a great plant, lasts for years. Uh, it's a little skunky, uh, it has a little bit of an aroma, so you probably don't want to put it outside your dining room or parlor window. Um, the dark one, is Persica, is almost black, and the the checkerboard has a very uh, unique uh, kind of a look this is the meleagris uh, meleagris uh it's only about 10 to 12 inches tall it's um can be used in a lawn and it stinks stinks in planting which we'll talk about in a minute um hyacinth uh hyacinth is great it's a uh, uh, wonderful fragrance very durable plant um, it, they say it's, it's, it should be planted as an annual, but that's probably from people who want to sell bulbs. I grow them until they hardly flower at all anymore. They do flower best probably your first year, and then they subsequently, the blossoms will spread out a little bit. They become a little leg, leggier. And the picture here on your right, you can see the darker purple in the in two places here and you can see how it's a little leggier. I'm assuming that that was last year's uh, hyacinths. Uh, just an average price of a hyacinth bulb is probably 75 cents to a dollar. So you're looking at $500 worth of bulb. hyacinth bulbs in that picture on the right. Um, but it's still, it's a very, it's a very beautiful plant and then the fragrance is not to be beat. Snowdrops, Galanthus is a, uh, the species, and snowdrops are probably um, our first our first flower each year. They can flower in January, early February. Um, sometimes I think they beat the witch hazels, uh, and they're very prolific. And they're easy to propagate, and they almost can be a little invasive, but I've never had it concern me too much. Um, but you, it's a good plant you can share it with people so uh, snowdrops uh when you after the long gray winter you want to see a little life in your garden it's a way to uh, get, get that going uh canadoxa um we have three or four little little blue flowers and these are wonderful uh this again is a there's a lawn in Loudonville on Route 9 that I pass every year that I see that has thousands of these and it's it's absolutely stunning. It's an underplanting uh, under underneath uh, some evergreens and uh, so it can handle quite a bit of shade. Um, a wonderful plant, about four to six inches tall, uh, and you can use it in the lawn if you want to do a lawn. Uh, Pushkinia. Um, Another small one with this white with this little little blue line and it comes in different varieties uh, different colors, uh, but this is standard Pushkinia um, Another very easy or very durable will be in there we'll put it in one time and it'll be there for a long time easy to work with uh, Again, it's not Not a bold It's a more of an intimate uh, looking little plant and the Kojum is, um, this is about 10, 12 inches tall. It's related to the snowdrop, but it, it, it grows up and then it has this little reflex, uh, kind of drooping little thing. I've never grown with Kojum, so uh, I know a lot of people think it's a, a very fine plant and it does have a very nice appearance and I need to try it. 
uh, Scylla siberica. Um, this is a Siberian wood squill, and this is a great plant. Again, you can use it in a lawn. You can use it in an under under planting to, um, next to a daffodil, and it's uh, it has a, a uh, very bright electric blue and uh, that true blue that's uh, kind of rare most of the rest of the season in our garden. Anemone blanda. Um, this is the, the Grecian windflower um, and it uh, is available obviously in white, pink, and blue and this purple, purple tinge thing. It's a great plant, very durable. Um, it kind of grows from a very bizarre looking Form. Um, but it's a, a, another very useful plant in the in the landscape. Okay, so now the Stinson planting, the lawn planting. Uh, on the left here, we have a crocus lawn. See, um, it's kind of over the top here. Probably aren't many of us going to do that, but you certainly can add some color to your lawn. Now, if you have a, an, a lawn or an area of your lawn that you don't need to mow in April. Maybe you can make it till middle of May uh, and, or you can mow it higher. Maybe you can mow it at four inches tall. Um, and this is a wonderful idea. Now this one on the right is kind of a little more free form, obviously. Uh, they're not into close crop turf, but uh, you have some species tulips in there and uh, like some daffodils and some other things. All right, so here's another crocus lawn in an institutional setting. And here we have, uh, this is not really a lawn, is it? Uh, but it's, uh, you can see many kinds of, you have muscari, you have uh, Dar Darwin hybrid tulips, um, some sort of, maybe some sort of daffodil down in the, in the front, well, maybe a euphorbia, I'm sure. Okay. All right, so um, if you're going to do a Stinson planting, uh, there are many resources online on how to do that, ideas for it, and pretty much all of those diminutive bulbs we, we've spoken about, um, from snowdrops to uh, species tulips to the Scyllas to the Inodoxas, um, the Pushkinias, they all can be used in certainly crocus uh, in a lawn um, and create some, some very neat effects. So. All right, container planting. Um, most of these bulbs, probably with the exception of some of the larger the, the larger bulbs, the uh, Darwin hybrids, the, are, uh, can be, um, can be uh, grown in containers. I guess even the larger ones, you know, I'm thinking your head with forcing. Um, some of the larger ones are difficult to force. But um, so container planting, similar to every other plant, uh, you need some good drainage. You put uh, maybe some pot shard at the bottom, make sure you have a drain hole in your pot, put in a few inches of soil, um, and then put your bulbs at proper depth, maybe a little shallower than you would outside and uh, then cover them up, firm it, and, uh, and, and water. And that's it. it. The only thing we've left out here is that these bulbs require a cooling period. So you can't, uh, you've got to put them in either in a refrigerator, generally at about 40 degrees, or in a, in a cool basement or garage. And, and it, the temperature needs to be stable for on tulips, you're about 12 to 14 weeks, and on the rest of these, you're probably about 10 weeks of cooling, and uh, that's critical for for their development. And then uh, you got to keep the soil uh, uniformly moist at um, about once a week. Make sure there's soil moisture there because you want these things to put down some roots right away. Okay. Now on the, on the right here, we have uh, this potted lasagna. Um, and you can pot this up. This is kind of fun. I've never done it quite this way, but um, uh, So you've got your shard for drainage on the bottom Maybe a little gravel or something there then some soil a couple inches of soil and then put in say your larger bulbs tulips Maybe and then put in some more soil a couple inches of soil and maybe then put in some hyacinths um, 
and then a couple inches of soil and then maybe some smaller bulb maybe a smaller uh, narcissus or something like that and uh, um, and then you'll have a wonderful display in that, in that case. and now forcing uh, many of these bulbs can be forced on the right we have paper whites it's kind of a classic um, they can grow and almost you just keep water in those jars and, uh, and these things will grow uh, hyacinth the same there's a classic hyacinth flat jar or you can put a bulb in and grow grow a single hyacinth um, forcing is to get these things to bulb to blossom sooner and um, there are many strategies, but basically it's similar to the container. We need the cooling period, which is 12 to 14 weeks for tulips and 10 weeks for most of these other bulbs. So uh, if you have a refrigerator um, that can maintain that temperature, that's great. If you have a cool corner of a basement or something like that, where you have a stable cool temperature, um, that, that will work also. And then um, you'll want to pot these up, keep them in the dark, for uh, until until it's for the cooling period and then put them into um gradually introduce them to some more heat and light uh during the cooling period you can cover them with a newspaper or something like that so they stay in the dark and then uh, once they break bud and you start to uh, see some growth then they can be moved into a warmer place into more sunlight and, uh, and they should be just fine so where do you buy your bulbs? There's bulbs right now just about everywhere. Uh, Walmart, uh, all the big stores, the home centers, uh, nurseries, garden centers. Um, but there's still some wonderful catalogs and the internet resources grow every day. So uh, you can explore, you can uh, find all kinds of information, all kinds of now on the internet. Um, if you want to know about deer resistant varieties of bulbs, you Put in deer resistant varieties and have more than you can handle. Um, so it's it's getting easier. Now the challenge then <laughs> becomes uh, the availability. Um, so if you go to the stores, you're going to have to pick what they have with the information they have. If you go online, you can find out about more varieties, but you may not they may not have the quite the availability that you, you want. Uh, catalogs are a great way to go about this. Uh, there are more and more companies doing away with catalogs now. So, but the ones that are there are, are generally pretty good. Now, check the reviews before you do business with people because some are better than others. And uh, as a representative of the Cooperative Extension, I'm not going to render any opinions on, on uh, where we should be doing business. Um, and so that's it. I don't know if anyone has any questions or any thoughts they'd like to share. David, do you have any? Uh... Okay, Keith, that was great. Thank you.